We're going on an expedition. This is an ATV expedition, and we're going to combine ATVing with some awesome photography. Now, we are in an extremely remote location in the wilds of British Columbia. This is the Chilcotin region, and it actually took us 10 hours to get to this place. This is where we're camping, uh, truly in the middle of nowhere. The road in was amazing. We started out with uh, steep canyon walls on one side and uh, a steep canyon drop off on the other side of the road, really narrow, windy roads that were pretty dangerous, especially for a truck and camper, uh, towing a trailer, something of this size. And then the road went right down to the river level where we were driving right beside an absolutely raging river and uh, then finally we were driving along beside a lake and then the mountain road started to go higher and higher it became more narrow and we started to drive through some big puddles we started to see the trees enclose in on the road and finally we were driving right beside the lake that we are now camped beside and it was really starting to get risky because the tires of the truck were like practically touching the water as we're trying to make it around these super narrow turns like there was practically a hairpin turn right beside the lake and uh, i've driven this road before but it's been 10 years since i've actually been to this spot right here it always seems like the road has gotten worse since the last time you come to a place like this whatever the case we made it and it's so incredible to be here. Like it just feels so good. So I wanna show you the equipment that we're going to use, the stuff that I like to bring along on an expedition. This is on a whole class unto itself. This is an ATV expedition where we are the only people and we're going to be ATVing to like hours away from here where it's just going to be Leah and I and no one else. So we're totally on our own and we have to be completely self-sufficient in every single way. So let me show you some of the stuff that we're bringing along and then you're coming with us on this expedition. So first and foremost, believe it or not, you absolutely have to have a chainsaw on a trip like this. So if you have a chainsaw, then that means you have to have separate gas and this is a two stroke chainsaw, which means we need mixed gas. And of course, then you need chainsaw bar oil. The enemy of everything you bring with you is vibration. And so I've learned from many, many hard trips where I've made horrible mistakes that have cost me dearly. And so I've learned to do whatever I can so that things cannot rattle and shake and rub up against each other. If there's one thing that's gonna get you in trouble on an ATV trip or any kind of a, a wheeled vehicle trip, it's your tires, getting a flat tire. So I've learned this lesson so many times, be prepared. So I've got the air compressor. I have here, uh, the brand is actually called Slime. And this is a Slime brand uh, air compressor, really skookum. You'll notice that I did not buy anything that takes a cigarette lighter adapter. So these we actually clamp onto the battery. I have a can of uh, Slime. Uh, it's like a, there's a goo in here. In addition, I also have a pressurized aerosol can. Wow, can this ever save you? You should have this in your car in the city at all times. So we also will have about two and a half extra gallons of gas. This is all going to be with us on the ATVs. Notice as well, we have two ATVs. Now we could have just come with one ATV, like a side-by-side -side that takes two people, but not advisable for a self-sufficiency type of expedition because if one machine breaks down, we can tow the other machine out. And so that's why we have a really, really skookum tow strap here so that one machine can always tow the second machine back out. Um, the location where we're going, as I said, is in the Chilcotin region of British Columbia. This is true wilderness. This is grizzly bear country. And there was a time when I was there 11 years ago to the same place we're heading to today. And when we arrived kind of at the end of the road, I got off my ATV. I was with my brother-in-law, Chris, and we walked away from our ATV and then we noticed 30 feet away from us, there was this large cougar in a pouncing position, just staring at us literally 30 feet away, like just ready and with two gallops, he would have been right on us. So since that time, I have definitely wanted to make sure that we have something aside from just bear spray on a trip. So this is a 12 gauge shotgun and this will be bungeed down to the front rack on the ATV. Currently I have a trigger lock on it and I'll take the trigger lock off. Um, we'll have a couple of boxes of ammo for that and chances are we'll never need to use it. Now these are the helmets and these are like standard dirt bike style helmets and on my helmet I have a little attachment here so I can put a GoPro camera here. 
And in addition, we use clear goggles. So something else that I found that's just a really great must have when you're on the big ATV trip is uh, jumper cables just in case because you never know. Gloves are really great so that you're not chafing the skin off your hands over time. So each ATV will have a can of bear spray and this would definitely be the first choice if we ever really found ourselves in trouble with a grizzly bear or a cougar. We've got a little first aid kit here um, as well. This is a survival blanket sort of a lot larger than the typical little um, sort of the ones that look like tin foil. Mosquito repellent. So the mosquito repellent that works in places like this, and believe me, we were being absolutely attacked by mosquitoes. I was practically being carried off the ground, and this stuff has 30% DEET in it. I just find that if your mosquito repellent does not have DEET, then it's really not going to work very well. So DEET is the way to go. Another little cool thing that we have ended up doing after losing a key and dropping a key is to put some flagging tape on the keys so that if you ever drop your key, you're definitely going to have them with you. So with my camera gear, I'm paring down like crazy. The only things that I'm really bringing, I'm bringing my camera with my all around lens, which is a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And then I have one wide angle lens. This is a prime, it's a 20 millimeter prime. So that if I find a field of wildflowers, I can get down really, really low and take a nice shot with all the wildflowers in the foreground. And kind of last but not least is a mini tripod so that uh, either I can take a slow exposure if I need to, or if I wanna take a selfie of Leah and I at the final destination. I am ready to unload these machines now. I gotta tell you, I'm super excited to be going on this expedition. So I'll get to work. So you notice with, with these little shorties here, none of the, nothing on the fabric is touching metal so that they won't get cut over time. And I've found that this is the, just the absolute best thing to do is to have one set of ratchet straps that's dedicated to trailering your machines and you can cut them short like this and never again will I have a cut ratchet strap, theoretically. And the unloading is just so much faster too. So we've been riding for an hour and 45 minutes and this road is amazing. Um, definitely way rougher than the last time that I took it 10 years ago, but still really awesome nonetheless. This sucker looks deep. Woo! Um, so we've just come up against uh, a whole bunch of trees that, are, that have fallen down right here and we can't quite get around them. And so this is where I'm so glad that I brought the chainsaw and let's light this up and get some stuff cut. Okay, we're done, let's go.
So as we drove along, we found the first dangerous section on the road and there had been a landslide, which meant that the road was now off camber. In other words, it was high on the right and low on the left and there was a steep cliff down on one side. And the last thing you ever want to do in a situation like this when the road is off camber is to spin your tires, which means the machine will just slide right off the road and then the trip is over. So we needed to move some rocks out of the way. So at this point, I put all my body weight on the high side of the machine on the right side, and I can assure you that it was really scary because the edge of the cliff was just inches away from the tires of the ATV. Okay. Holy smokes, that was freaky. Okay, let's get the other machine. upon a freaky looking part and I'm not really sure if this is passable definitely freaky especially with these logs I should probably move them yeah freaky I should have moved them okay I'm gonna move some stuff for Leah's machine this is super steep here and put the brake on definitely a freaky section I cannot believe I cannot believe that 30 years ago I came here with my truck and full-size camper and I made it all the way to where we're going just seems incredible the road seemed to get scarier and scarier because it was getting more and more narrow. There were more landslides and we had to move more rocks out of the way. And of course, we had to deal with that side hill on the road that put the machine off camber and on an angle, which just heightens the fear factor. A little bit freaky. Not really nice. But all the effort was worth it because the trail led to the most incredible field of wildflowers that I've ever seen. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful! We just stopped and took some pictures here, shot some video. I, I really, I've just never seen anything so beautiful with wildflowers. They're just everywhere and in so many different colors. Wow. And that's where we're going, right up there. Going up, 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 up to the top. And we are going higher and higher and higher. We're in the, really starting the, the final ascent now to the mountaintop. And this is an old mining road that's been closed for many decades. So remember when I was showing you all the stuff back at the camper, I said, this is going to be an expedition. So can you kind of see what I'm talking about? So we are the only humans within, I don't know how far, we've been driving for three and a half hours so far. We haven't seen another human the whole time. And now we're climbing up and up and up this old abandoned mining road. And uh, as you saw in certain parts of the road where there were landslides, rock slides, there's no way that any trucks can get here. So the only people who could get here, they're either on dirt bike, ATV, or they've hiked in. And uh, so we're really alone up here. We are maybe about 
two thirds of the way to the top in the final climb. It's an exciting experience. And we haven't done this in 10 years, but to be back here, it's like you kind of forget just how steep the hills are, how rugged this place is, how remote it feels, but it is so fun. Like we're both loving this. Leah's having a good time too. She's holding the camera right now. We just stopped for lunch, recharged our personal batteries. And now I want to get the drone up in the air. It's pretty windy. I'm hoping it's not too windy for the drone, but we're going to get the drone in the air so that you can just kind of see the majesty and the spectacle of this place. The road just seemed to get steeper and rougher as we went. We were already at 7,000 feet high. We had another 1,000 feet to go. We were 46 kilometers away from camp. It was getting late in the day, and we were starting to wonder if we were going to make it to the top. We're 8,000 feet high. We made it to the very top of the mining road and oh my goodness, it was a challenge. The, just the rocks everywhere and the side hilling, the side slope and parts of the mountain where it was sloughing off in a rock slide with a, you know thousands of feet down below us. It was definitely freaky. We rode for four to five hours to actually get here. It was a really long haul and now we have the same distance to go back. One thing that was of note was that I have never seen so much grizzly bear poo in one place. And when we get off the rocky slope, we're going to go through a treat area and there was pile after pile of grizzly poo. I mean, and you know it when you see it, it's big. When we get down out of the trees, there was the one part on the road that had the amazing wildflowers. We're gonna stop there and take some pictures and then book it all the way back to the campsite and just try and make some good time to get back. We have loved the experience and combining a photography trip with an adventure like this, ATVing is just such an incredible thing to do. Photography is not all about picking up your camera and taking pictures and all the f-stop and the shutter speed in the ISO. Photography is about having fun and creating an adventure. Like I always say, this is the adventure of your life, so don't miss it. So that's my encouragement for you, is that you'll create your own expedition in whatever fashion you want to create. So we'll see you down at the bottom of this hill and we'll take some wildflower pictures. We just stopped the machines on the way back and I put the wide angle lens on the camera and I'm just gonna snap a few photos here of some of these wildflowers. They look absolutely stellar and I'm really happy with the photos that I'm getting. Uh, it's just gonna be a quick photo shoot. I'll show you some of the photos from this photo shoot. I hope you've enjoyed this ATV adventure and my encouragement to you is create your own expedition. Like don't go half-hearted, go all in. Don't be a dabbler, like be a diver. Dive in, create your own expedition in a way that's awesome for you. Thanks for watching.